Hey everyone, it's Scott from Double Deedle Design. Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to talk about something that was requested in previous comments, which was 3D details. 3D details in Revit can be a little tricky, but they're also a great way to convey information to the contractor. We're gonna show you step-by-step -step how to draw these details. First thing we wanna ask ourselves, why would we use 3D details instead of our typical 2D flat plan section elevation construction details, sometimes even hand-drawn isometric details in a set of drawings. And the first reason is 3D details tend to project a lot more information in one pop than they do in their plan section and elevation counterparts. It's easy to look at a 3D detail with some basic notes and dimensions and get a really good idea of what's going on. 3D details tend to show things that are easier to understand spatial relationships between two elements, distances in 3D view that are a lot easier than looking at that in plan, section, and elevation. Another thing is, believe it or not, I've seen a lot of contractors and builders that really, I wouldn't say enjoy, but a lot of times they understand 3D details better than the 2D ones. We all are very picture oriented, and I've actually seen contractors in job trailers that will open up a set of drawings, especially for a school project that I worked on recently. Every time there was a question in the field, they would open up the perspectives or the isometrics and point to things in the drawings or in the image instead of opening up a plan or a section sheet. So they are used quite a bit in the field and therefore their accuracy is pretty critical. A couple things to be careful of when working in 3D details or planning to put 3D details on a sheet. First of all, in my opinion, 3D details need to be supplementary to other plan section, elevation, drafted details. Those details have more capability as far as showing symbology, showing dimensions, showing text, detail groups. They're very easy to get exactly right. While a 3D detail can be tricky because you have to model everything exactly right in Revit in order for it to look correct. So just be careful and make sure that you're not showing only 3D details and hoping that's good enough for the contractor because 3D details are very tough to get right all by themselves. They usually need to be supplementary to other details. The second thing is, is don't forget, especially in a lot of commercial architecture firms, that your time is billable. Residential firms, maybe there are some that are, some use lump sum, some use time and materials. But time that you spend modeling and drawing a 3D detail, if it's not something that's very beneficial to the contractor to see in 3D, could be a waste of time and a waste of money for your client. So always be cognizant of how much time you're spending drawing critical details and how much time you're spending drawing something simply for the joy of drawing it, and then your owner has to pay for it. Currently, Revit has very limited annotations that can be shown in a detail. Text notes, dimensions, some spot slopes and spot elevations, and a few others, uh, but it, sometimes it gets really difficult to show things accurately and correctly. So make sure you're only using annotations and dimensions that are critical. Otherwise, you could be over-dimensioning, over-annotating, uh, and again, spending more time on the detail than you need to. Finally, keep them simple. Keep your shading, keep your lighting, your shadows as inconspicuous as possible. This isn't intended to be an amazing rendering. It's intended to be part of the construction documents and contract documents as well. So they are something that will be part of the final documents. If you're looking to do informative details, more descriptive that don't involve a lot of information or more a uh, diagrammatic, you may want to use something like SketchUp or another piece of software that doesn't require such heavy modeling um, and allows you to draw what you need to draw to show the detail properly. So let's get into the tutorial. Let's show you how we put together a 3D detail for a stair railing and place it on a sheet that you can use in your construction documents. All right, everyone, so welcome back. We're gonna go ahead and get started doing some 3D details. Now I've got a blank project here. 
just the default Autodesk project. I'm going to go ahead and open up a railing family that I pulled from one of Autodesk's old families. It was a large uh, group of railings and stairs. I haven't been able to find it since, so I'm not quite sure where to direct you to download it, but um, I pulled a railing and a set of stairs off there. I hit the copy command, and so now I'm in my project. If you're in your own project, uh, of course, you probably have your railing set on your stairs and you're going to go ahead and zoom in in detail. So I'm going to do an edit paste. So let's do a modify paste, align to selected levels. We'll go to level one and it's hovering over here a little bit away from uh, the center. I always like to put everything I'm working on in the center of the project at the uh, internal origin or the center point or project base point if possible. You know that I like to work in 3D view. So let's just do a default 3D view. And here is that railing. This one's a, a bit ornate, but this is a good one to practice on because we're going to try to see how much detailing and annotations we can get out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this corner rail here to do a 3D isometric of. And what that'll allow me to do is show the handrail, it'll show the top post, it'll show the balusters, it'll show your intermediate rails, it'll even show the floor. Railings are notorious for not aligning to stairs very well. You can see here that this railing is kind of chunked on top of this outside stringer. It's not the best organization. But again, if we're talking billable rates and what your client is paying for, I don't have time to really go in and model this expertly. But what I want to do is convey the information that the builder or the contractor would need to build this and to get this done uh, as, as efficiently as possible without get them getting confused by a bunch of details. So I'm going to turn this railing into a floor instead of on a stair. And the reason for that is what I really try to focus on is the corner post itself and not what it's sitting on. We can show that in another detail or we can fake that in our 3D detail. So let's go ahead and go architecture floor. I'm just going to go back to my level one view and I'm just going to create a rectangle here. In doing so, I'm going to edit the path of this railing and I'm going to get rid of this side and this side and these and I'm going to shorten this up to just about what I would need for my detail and hit the check mark. Let's pick a new host. Let's pick the floor that we created. And now I'm going to delete these stairs. I'm not really going to use them. So if I look in 3D, you can see I'm here. They're kind of sitting where I want, but we can clean that up a little bit. And again, maybe these need to be stretched out a little bit more. So let's take these out. Let's go a little bit further, five feet or so. I'm kind of strange. I like all my dimensions to be as perfect as possible. And that, that's a whole nother discussion about um, how we uh, like to make sure that our drawings, when we create a brand new building, ground up construction, that it doesn't have any odd dimensions in it, but that's for another video. So again, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my detail by using one of the most important things you'll ever use in Revit, which is this create section box by selected element command. Best command they ever put in many years ago used to not have this this was an add-in actually it was a plug-in by another company and autodesk copied it or took it i don't know exactly we will select this railing it creates a section box we're going to stretch it in so we don't see these end balusters we're actually going to stretch it in pretty close and most details are at a scale of i won't say most but a lot of details that i draw are either at one and a half inches uh, per foot or three inches per foot. You get into six inches per foot, you're talking about really specific, tiny, like grout details. And if you go coarser than one and a half inches, uh, you're talking about larger foundation or almost whole wall details. You can't see my hands moving here, but we'll we'll take this corner railing and we'll try it at one and one and a half. I'll change my scale down here to one and a half inches equals zero. Notice how my level one, that might be too small. We might actually want to do this at an inch. Let's go to an inch. That feels better. I mean, again, remember your details. When printed out full size on a full size sheet without cropping, your details need to be about the size of the palm of your hand on a sheet. That's the rule I always use. When I see people draw three inch details that take up half a sheet, that's just too big. Uh, so always try to use the palm of your hand. If you have small hands, maybe the palm of your hand plus some. Uh, but if you have big hands like mine, 
try to take the palm of your hand and if you were put that on a detail on your sheet that's about as big as i would like my detail to be it just it just works better and it's most usable for these 3d details we will uh, continue with that thought the first thing you want to do when you're working in a 3d detail is you want to make sure that you have your right shading settings and in this uh, because they're going on a set of usually black and white drawings sometimes they'll print in color I like to make my shading very basic, regular hidden line with a little bit of shadows. That's about it. If you think you're going to print in color, I would not go crazy with too much rendering. Uh, I would probably just use consistent colors, maybe a little bit of shaded. This is totally up to you. You decide what you like best in your drawings. If you do consistent colors, it flattens it out. It's not the most attractive, but it's good for just basic color or orientation. Uh, shaded gives you a little bit more depth around the edges. Let's try just hidden line here and then we'll go to our graphic properties, which I never understood why it wasn't under the shadows button. Uh, it's under, <laughs> you, in order to control shadows, you have to go to the graphic display options here. Anyway, uh, so we'll go to our shadows and let's just, I always just try ambient first, see what that does. It gives me a little bit of darkness around this area and then cast shadows. Mm. You know me, I don't like too strong a shadows, but we can play with that. Let's do um, single uh, from top left. I like top left a lot. I don't want my ground plane here. I want it to just cast as it's supposed to. Um, that looks pretty good. We could probably bump up our altitude a little bit more to get those shadows a little shorter. That looks a little bit, that looks a little bit better. And then we will change our sun ambient light and shadows to my favorite 80 80 and 20. nice nice clean shadows very simple enough to show that there's relief there but not too much to overwhelm the drawing once we get this set where we want let's go ahead and turn off our section box and lock the view locking the view is the critical thing that you're going to need when you're creating these details because locking the view will allow you to place some very limited annotations on it and that's what we're going to look at uh, as we get into this detail a little bit further remember revit doesn't really allow you to have too many annotations on a 3d detail the powers that be have decided that's pretty limited and so we'll just do the simple steps that we can to get this on a sheet and looking good so i will first find the orientation of my view i'm old school i like simple isometrics you know a 30 degree angle uh, as much as possible some people will want to put this in perspective if you put it in perspective you're even more limited on your annotations in fact i don't even think you can annotate with a perspective view but you keep it in orthographic is the second thing keep your views in orthographic and then you can work a little bit more with what you've got this isometric is perfect we're going to stick with this so the first thing we're going to do we're going to go down here to this little house and we're going to say lock the view we're going to save this orientation and lock view once you select that, you can't keep uh, the default 3D view with brackets if it's locked. So we'll just rename this to um, railing detail. Now, notice the little house down here now has a yellow lock symbol next to it. And you can unlock this later. But now, as much as I try it, I'm holding down shift middle mouse button to try and rotate. It won't let me rotate. If I grab this and try and rotate, it won't let me rotate the view. This view is locked and it's set. Second thing we want to do is turn off our section box. You can do this by two ways. You can select it and type in EH on the keyboard, which is hide in view. You can also go to your visibility graphics, VG, VV, whichever one you prefer. Scroll down to, or first go to annotations. Scroll down to section boxes and you can turn it off. That gets rid of it. I kind of like the level one here, but we this maybe will be on a stair and doesn't need the level one. So let's go ahead and turn off our grids as well. I'm sorry, let's go ahead and turn off our levels. Turn off levels, that goes away. All right, you may decide once you're in here, I really would like that section box to come back. I have a keyboard shortcuts for enable temporary view properties. When temporary view properties came out, it was one of the greatest things ever. So I go ahead and I set mine to ET. ET is enable temporary view properties for me. It turns the border purple. Now I can go to my visibility graphics. I can turn back on my section box. And I'm gonna shrink it up a little bit more in the back. I don't need this much here. 
and I don't need this much here. Okay. Then it just ET again and everything goes away the way it's supposed to be. Now, the first thing we're going to do is let's try to, let's do the easy thing first. And that is we're going to annotate. Okay. We're going to do call outs and leaders. Now, when the detail is locked, and your orientation is saved, you are allowed to create callouts. I'm a curved callout kind of guy, so we'll just label this as top rail. Okay, I don't like the size of this, it's too big. There we go, that's where it need to be. And if you ever uh, are drawing a ton of annotations, you realize, I'm gonna change this arrowhead too. Let's make this, because it's a default project, it's not correct, I apologize for wasting time, but if you, if you want to recreate your next text note with the same size as this one, if I were to do text again, it would go back to quarter inch Arial. Just right click and say create similar. Make sure you finish that command, the create similar, otherwise it'll go back to your quarter inch. So we'll do this one and we'll call it handrail. Okay. So now we've started to create some annotations here. Let's do a few more. We're gonna label these very generically. Alistair post. Now, if you work in commercial architecture and some residential as well, uh, you'll want to be very specific about what you're calling out. Uh, in some builders, they don't, they just want to see what you want and they'll build it themselves. I've seen that in residential construction more than in commercial. Commercial where I work and what I've done has been incredibly specific. You have to tell them exactly what you want. Um, and so a lot of times I will rename these more specifically. So I will say wood, and we use a lot of abbreviations. So we'll say wood baluster post 36 inches, let's say 42 inches high. Ornate top cap. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more specific here. What does that really mean? Who knows, but at least it'll get some information to the contractor. Top rail, we'll call this one a wood. So Revit has this thing where if you edit the text, sometimes it doesn't immediately allow you to start typing. The way to fix that is I just go over here and I click the none that's already highlighted again, and it allows you to start type, start typing. Or you just wait a few seconds and it allows you to start typing again. It's very strange. Wood top rail painted. We don't have to get into too much detail on this railing, but you're starting to see how we're starting to call out these details. This one we do want to identify. We'll do this as an inch and a half circular hand, wood handrail. Okay, so we can go through and label all these. Let's do another one. At, I don't know, what are these at? You would know better on your own custom railing, but these are probably at, if, we're, if they're by code, we should call it at four inches on center. It looks a little bit bigger than that, but we'll go ahead and say that just for illustrating how you do these. So we'll say four inches OC on center. So again, you're starting to see this is, again, this view is locked. I'm gonna try to rotate it. It won't rotate. I'm gonna hold down shift middle mouse button. It won't rotate. We have a locked 3D view and we're starting to show the components of our detail. So the next step we're going to do is arguably the most fun and kind of the most challenging to understand. And I'll show you how I like to think about it. It is dimensioning in a 3D view is incredibly interesting. It's not that it's a bad thing, but it, it does take a little bit of practice to understand. So let's get right into it. So let's get into the next part of this detail, which is arguably one of the most interesting and could be the most fun the way it turns out. But it can be challenging if you're unsure of exactly how to do it. So I'll give you some pointers to get through dimensioning and how to pull dimensions on these 3D views. So the first thing you need to think of is, especially on dimensioning, what work plane are you gonna be working at? And here's my hands creating work planes uh, in space, but I can show you better on the screen. Um, if you click the show work plane in this corner, and if you pull the dimension right now on this drawing, it would align itself to that work plane. So if I click show, this blue box shows up, okay? And this is set to level one, which is my floor. If I were to pull a dimension, and I'll leave the blue box on for a second, and I'll say, say I'm gonna pull a dimension from this, uh, this side of the base plate to this side, and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see I'm gonna pull it to this side. 
Notice how that dimension wants to live on this ground. It doesn't want to snap upwards or backwards or to the left. It wants to stay on this uh, ground plane. And I can click it and place it. I can you know, use the dots to extend my lines out. And that's fine. You know, Anything flat like this on this plane will dimension fine. But I don't want to dimension on the ground. I want to show heights. The first thing I need to do before I place my dimension is I need to align my work plane. So we're going to go back up here and we're going to say set work plane. Now, level one is a, a level that's in space right now. We don't have any vertical grids in this model. We don't have anything to call a vertical plane off of. So we're going to have to use one of the railing elements to pull a dimension off of. Now, if I were to pick a plane and I were to select, say, the front of this railing, then any dimension, notice the blue, uh, the blue square goes and snaps to that face. Any dimension I pull is going to be off of that face. So if I pull the overall height, right, I go from the floor up to the top of the railing, it's going to pull it along that face. Now that's fine if, I'm, if that's where I want my dimensions to be, and that seems like a pretty good spot for it. Um, so four and a quarter, I guess I'll have to rename my post here, um, to four and a quarter, well, four and a quarter would be 48 plus four is 52 and a quarter inches. Let's just keep things clean. Um, but again, see how this not only, you know, kind of lies on top of other elements. So I'd want to pull it either pretty far away or I'd want to bring it over to this side. I prefer bringing it over to this side. So we're just going to move some of these dimensions out of the way. We'll snap them, always snap them and line them. Snap, like I'm snapped. Okay, so now we've got a dimension on this, ba this base work plane and we've got a dimension running vertically. Let's pull a dimension on this side just to show you all three sides. So we'll go architecture, we'll go set work plane, we'll pick this face and we can go crazy. We could actually you know, pick one of these if we wanted to. Let's pull a dimension from let's say the height of this uh, base rail from here to here and then underside underside let's keep clicking all the way up let's do a a stacked dimension on here this isn't really perfect but for illustration purposes this will work so now we can show our contractor or our builder exactly how high all of these elements are let's make sure our leader lines always extend as close to the object without actually touching them as we can Here's another one, but see how it's pulled back. We're going to have to extend these closer to here so that they look like they're actually assigned to something. Again, this one should go to the top here. It's where the blue and the white, where the blue plane intersects the white element is what we're pulling to. And again, as we said in the introduction, these details need to be supplementary to other details on your drawing sheet top of rail here and ground plane here we'll turn this off and now we have you know not the cleanest these dimensions aren't the best i would probably edit this family a little bit but this is for showing you how a 3d detail can come together if i wanted other things like other annotations symbols and so on you'll notice if you go to annotate a lot of this stuff is grayed out because Revit has decided or determined that a lot of these things won't work on a 3D detail. So the only thing you can really get, you can get spot elevations and that's nice. You know, you could say that this, if this was your stair base, this was zero. So you can't put spot elevations on there. You can do coordinates. I have never used a spot coordinate in my life um, because I'm not doing a lot of civil work. Spot slopes, um, you can pull detail groups if you want, but you can't place them. Um, and then your text. So most of my 3D details have been exclusively text and dimension heavy. Again, that creates a really nice kind of illustration for your contractor to build off of. What's left on here? Uh, we could mess a little bit with some shadows and some shading, but overall, this is about the best we're going to do. So I'm gonna create a new sheet. We'll use the typical Autodesk sheet here and then all you have to do is take your view and place it on your sheet as such drop it into place but make sure you're not uh, overlapping other things put your view title on here and you're good to go this this detail is an example of how we would create a 3d detail on a sheet 
I would like to see on a detail sheet, other supplementary 2D line-based details because it doesn't show anything like the distance from the circular railing to the balusters itself. It doesn't show ADA clearances. We haven't shown uh, any type of materiality on here, which we'd wanna show in regular details. So there's an example of how to create a 3D detail and to put it on a sheet. One thing I finally wanted to add, this is an example of a project that I did recently. This is a behavioral health hospital here in Montana. And just another example of how we put these 3D details together. These were stair balusters, very similar to what we just did, that showed a unique condition, how the stair railing turned the corner, what the top rail did, and how the steps interacted. This was very buildable. The, it was very successful uh, in the field. The contractors actually looked at this more than the actual details themselves, which always seems to be the case. But notice how Revit still has some issues. It, you know, I could never get this end piece to terminate properly had to, you know without actually creating this little level we had other details on the rest of the sheet that would show you know how these all would kind of come together how they would align so here's an example of a detail sheet and um, for confidentiality I'm not showing the name of the client but we are making 3d details that are in accordance with other details on the page and using them all together for the contractor to build a set of steps uh, pretty easily so that's it for stair details. Thanks so much for watching. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe, leave me comments, tell me what you like. Thanks to all the people who have subscribed. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video. Have a good one.